So let's go straight to it. A quick, a quick intro about myself. I am Marcel Ferreira, and I work on the pro developer team in Power Apps Studio. So, and my message here today is basically that uh, Power Platform welcomes pro developers as well. We call pro developers or code first developers, the traditional developer, people writing code. And uh, the point it is the developer does more than writing code. He solves problems. And Power Platform is another way for you to solve problems quickly and efficiently. Uh, a way I like to define Power Platform is basically a low-code extensibility model for Azure. So developers are already using Azure to uh, create services, store services, uh, infrastructure, and so on. Power Platform is another one, and it, I will show one example where it makes sense to use it. Uh, here on this slide, what I would like to point it out is that we do have developer tools ecosystems. We have uh, CLI, our Power Platform CLI, which is our main engine for all the tools that we have for the developer, for pro developer community. Uh, we also, uh, through CLI, we support CI, CD, uh, by using GitHub Actions or Azure DevOps. And we also have integrations with uh, Visual Studio and VS Code, okay? Today, I will specifically talk about Visual Studio and APIs. So, again, uh, this is a super important value for Power Platform. It welcomes everyone. So, one of the main scenarios that we have of collaboration is when traditional developers are making their data available for Power Platform, and then citizen developers or business users, they will go and start to create with Power Platform. And that's great, and yes, we want people to keep doing that. But also, we want to point out that developers, they can use themselves uh, Power Platform as well in the inner loop when they are developing solutions. And that's the scenario on the demo that I have today. So I will do a real case, which is basically, I will play the role of a back-end developer. So I have a, I have an inventory management legacy system, and I'm responsible for building APIs for this, uh, for this data that I have. Basically, I'll have three operations to retrieve how many warehouses I have, how many items, and how many items are available in each warehouse. Okay, I'm, I'm very good on that. I'm developing my API using Visual Studio, is an ASP.NET web API. But I have a need now. My legacy system doesn't support uh, mobile, doesn't support phone. So I have a bunch of few technicians. They are on the field doing maintenance, installation. When they need a part, they have to call. They have to take the phone and call a warehouse to check if an item is available there. So the developer had a look. And then well, the proposition value here is he will quickly, with Power Platform, create a phone app so he can deploy to the few technicians so they can get how many items are available in each warehouse in real time, okay? And we are starting from scratch here. So there are two prereqs that the developer will have to do. He will need to create a Power Platform environment. He doesn't have one. And uh, also he will have to create a solution. Let's go to it. I will talk over each step. So easiest way for you to get a developer environment is using the developer plan. So you can search for Power Apps developer plan, or you can get to the link in the end of the presentation. Uh, and this is not a speed up. This is the normal process for you to get a developer environment for free. You get up to three environments. All you need is a business email. You will type your email. You'll log in as normal. Um, then you will sign in, and you will be taken to the maker portal with one environment already created. And this is what this developer is doing. Uh, we'll just get started, and then I will be taken to the maker portal. Um, it might take a while for the environment to be created. It's very quick, uh, very often. And then you see in the top right corner, the name of your environment. I have an environment created for me. Right, so that's the first step. I have a Power Platform environment. That's great. Next step, it is let's create a solution. So basically, a Power Platform solution is a way for you to pack all your artifacts that you will create through this demo. Think as a solution in Visual Studio, really. Uh, so let me go ahead 
and create a solution. So I have to go to the maker portal where I have an environment. Here I will use another account, which is the one that I will use for my demo. So here you can see I am in the maker portal and here I have four environments. I will use the dev environment and I will create a new solution. I just click in solution and I will create, let me close this, I will create a new solution. Let's call invent on hand because this is what we will do. Just select the publisher and let's go and create. Okay, I have a solution. So let's go to Visual Studio now, okay? So this is my API. As I said, we have three operations. So it's a normal API. I don't have anything for Power Platform yet. Let me use Swagger to test this API. It's running my local environment, my local machine. Uh, I will play and use Swagger to, to check if it's working. Okay, so here's my API. If I use this operation get, I should have a list of warehouses. There you go. So all working well. So let's make this API available in my Power Platform. So the way I do that is by using the connected services node here in my project, and then I select Add Power Platform, and then I will be able, first you have to select an account where you have a Power Platform environment. You select your environment. If you don't have an environment, you have the link here to create one environment. Uh, then I will use the solution that I just created, and then I will create a new custom connector. And a custom connector is basically a wrapper around my API to make it available in Power Platform. Another thing that I have to do is I have to create a dev tunnel. Okay, Remember, we are in the inner loop. So the API is running my machine, and I'm using a dev tunnel to expose this API uh, to a public endpoint so I can use Power Platform with the API running my machine. And this allows me to debug in real time. Okay, uh, and This is actually super great, and that's why the audience here is really pro developers. They can develop and debug in real time. Okay, now Visual Studio already created the connector for me. I need to run my API, so I'll be running the API. You can see here now it's using a developer tunnel. Uh, so it should be all good for me to use Power Platform. So I can open the, the maker portal here from Visual Studio. I'll use this link, which will take me to the right environment and with the list of connectors that I have in my environment. Here I will see the connector that I just created, Invent API. That's great. So let's go to the solution that I created, Invent on hand. And I will go ahead and start to create my new app. So I will create a phone app very quickly, you will see. I don't have any previous knowledge on any UI framework. Um, I don't want to deal with the complexity of the UI framework, like dependencies and all that stuff. Um, so I will call here Invent on hand, and I, I selected phone. Uh, because I want to do a phone app. So the first step, I will add the data from the custom connector that I created. It's called Invent API. I will add and create a connection. And okay, my API is already connected to this app. Let's use templates to make it quick. I will add two screens, two list screens. The first screen will show the list of items, and the second one will show the list of available items in each warehouse. So let me just Oops, uh, let me just, uh, let me rename the, the screens here. We have screen one, and we will have screen two. All right, so the first screen, it will be the list of my items. So I will connect the gallery to my API, and here I will call my oper operation. So it's basically my custom connector, dot the name of my operation, get items. Uh, let me change the layout. I want to show only three fields from my API and let me select the fields. So these are the fields from my API. As you can see, I'm already connected. So let's use the item ID, the name and the description. That's good enough and I have my first screen ready. So it's basically a list of all the items that I have. Right, And when I select one item, I want to see how many are available in each warehouse. So let's go to the next screen, the screen two that I just created. And that's 
all I have to do. Now let's open the screen too and let's add information about the available items. So it's very similar. I will connect the gallery to my API and I will call the operation get invent on hand. This operation requires a parameter though, which is the item ID, which will uh, I will retrieve from the first screen. So let's let's call the browser gallery from the first screen. That's the name of the gallery. I will take the selected record and I will use the item ID field. This is what my API requires. Okay. There you go. And I have a breakpoint, and you can see I'm debugging real time. I can see I have the item ID selected. Let me remove the, the breakpoint and continue working. Uh, just to finish very quickly here. So let's change the layout. I just want to show the warehouse and how many items are available in the warehouse. So let's select here the city, which is my warehouse, where my warehouse is, and the number in stock. And my app is pretty much ready. Um, I could change the name here, but let's just change uh, the button. Let's add a back button so I can go back to the first screen and we can see the app working. Change the icon to back. And uh, okay, let's add the code. We need to navigate to the screen one. And we are good to go. So let's play the app. Here is, uh, let's go back to the screen one. Here is the list of my items and I can see how many items are available in each warehouse. So in less, in about five minutes, I would say, I created the phone app uh, and I, this would be ready for me to ship uh, to, my, to my field technicians, right? Well, not quite ready and we will see. So all I need to do now is save and all the the app and the connect the custom connector. It is in my solution, the solution that I created. Now I would have to publish to make this available, but the connector is connected to my local environment, right? The API is running my machine. So I need to update this custom connector. So let's do that. I can also use Visual Studio for that. So once I deploy this API, and I already deployed this API, uh, is hosted in Azure. So I have an endpoint. Here I'm using publish profile. So you can see here the endpoint. This is my API. So I need to, to make the custom connector to go to that endpoint, not my local, my dev tunnel. So once I'm ready, I can connect to Power Platform here as well, and I can update or I can even create a new custom connector. Uh, I could use also another tool, but here I'm in Visual Studio, so I'm just doing that. But you get the point, right? The point it is you need to update the custom connector when you want to share, so it will use a real API, um, and it, uh, which is already published. And here is the URL. Uh, you also have access to the open API file that the Visual Studio generates. You can put in your source code. Uh, you can customize and you can do a lot more with that, uh, but we will finish here. So let's quickly review what we have done. Uh, a backend developer, which is developing an API, he quickly gets started with Power Platform by using developer plan. You can create up to three environments and then you can use that to modernize your legacy applications. You can easily create a front end or you can even create automations. You can use Power Automate, a business website. So there are really lots of uh, ways you can use it. You can go to the repo, this example, uh, all source code is available. So you can use the link here in this QR code to have a look on the code. And uh, then that's how I'll finish. And thank you very much for everyone.